We will look at just one interesting concept in this video and that is a coin toss. You will not believe how interesting it is. Think about it. When you toss a coin, it will either land a head or a tail. Either head or tail. All of us would agree that these are the only two possibilities. Suppose I ask you a simple question. What is the probability of the coin landing a head? This question asks us that if we toss a coin, what is the likelihood that the coin lands a head? How do we calculate it? Here's how. There is only one way in which you can get a head. The only way is if it lands a head. That's the first thing we had to find out to find this probability. The second thing we need to find out is the total number of possibilities. In total, there are only two possibilities, a head or a tail. This number in the denominator is actually all possibilities. These two cover all the possibilities since you cannot possibly get any other outcome. You either get a head or a tail. This tells you that out of the two possibilities, there is only one way in which this event can occur. So the probability of a coin landing a head is 1 by 2, which is 1 half. This is a fraction and can also be written in decimal form as 0 0.5. The numerator tells you the number of ways in which an event can occur and the denominator is all possible events. Here's another question. What is the probability of a coin landing a tail? The logic is very similar. There is only one way in which we can get a tail and the total possibilities are just two, head or tail. So the probability of getting a tail is also one half. Look at these two events, landing a head and landing a tail. Both have the same probability. And since the probability tells us the likelihood of an event occurring, such events are called equally likely events. We say that getting a head or getting a tail at the toss of a coin are equally likely events. That's because their probability of occurrence is the same. Let's try and deduce a formula for the probability of an event. In the numerator, we have the number of ways in which an event can occur. And in the denominator, we have the total number of possible outcomes. It just means how many possibilities out of the total possibilities. This formula will be a lot clearer as we see more and more examples. The formula is not important. What's important is what we are going to see next. What if there are 10 throws of a single coin? I'm not talking about 10 coins tossed simultaneously. I'm talking about one coin being tossed 10 times. Since the events are equally likely, does that mean that after 10 throws, we will surely get 5 heads and 5 tails? This will not always be true. You may get 6 heads and 4 tails. Or maybe 9 heads and a tail. Or maybe even 10 tails. So what does this half essentially tell us? It tells us that if the process of tossing a coin is repeated many, many, many times, then we will get approximately the same number of heads and tails. So if you toss a fair coin a million times, you will see that you would get almost the same number of heads and tails. Remember, the probability does not give you a perfect or a sure shot answer. It just tells you the likelihood of an event occurring.